Not all skin is created equal. Moles and birthmarks appear early in our lives due to various factors. And as we grow old, we can also get warts on our skin. On this episode, we distinguish these different formations on our skin and determine how they should concern us. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and welcome to MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. Our guests are here today to give insight on birthmarks, moles, and warts. With us is Dr. Claudine Ray Lagman Javier. She's a dermatologist from Derma360 and the Makati Medical Center. Also with us is Dr. Maria Cristina Puyat, who is a dermatologist and preventive regenerative medicine specialist at the Rizal Medical Center. Let's talk about birthmarks, or what we call here in the Philippines, nabalat. Now, this refers to discolored skin that is either on a flat or raised areas and are often seen at birth or form shortly after birth. Now, we'll start the discussion with Dr. Claude. Are birthmarks caused by anything mothers did or didn't do when they were pregnant? It is not caused by that, definitely, although the cause of birthmarks is still really unknown. Until now. Some birthmarks are sort of referred to as stains on the surface of the skin, while others extend into the tissues under the skin or grow above that surface. Dr. Claude, what are some of the causes then for an infant uh, to have birthmarks? So something along the time that the baby was in the womb, something was going on. And uh, there are two types, the vascular and the pigmented. Mm -hmm. So yung vascular natin, they say it's the abnormal overproduction of blood vessels. Yung pigmented naman, abnormal clustering of nevu cells or pigmented cells in a certain area of the skin. Dr. Cree, what are mostly the treatment uh, uh, procedures for, for birthmarks that are prominently displayed in the face? Birthmarks can be small, and when it's small, you don't really have um, interventional um, treatment for them. Basically, you just wait it out. Uh, it usually resolves in about 5 to 10 years. However, when it starts to get bigger, and uh, it depends on the location, no? if it's uh, located near the eye area or the mouth area, where it affects your eating, or even in the nose, wherein it affects breathing, then it would need a multidisciplinary kind of treatment. Like, for example, if it involves the eye, we also need to see an ophthalmologist because it can penetrate the eye bulb. So there are different kinds of treatment also, depending on the birthmark. If it's a plain cavernous hemangioma, we can do pulse dye laser treatments. If it's, uh, for example, if it's like AV malformation or venous malformation, we can do sclerosing agents, and uh, if it's too big, then we can also ask the help of uh, surgeons. Initially, for the parent of the child that they see with a, uh, with a mark on their face, uh, is this something that needs immediate attention uh, from a dermatologist? Most of it are benign. But then there are a little, uh, there are a portion of it. It can be disfiguring, but also it involves other organs. So we need to check that out. It's not just a matter that if you have a hemangioma, you just leave it behind. That's why you mm -hmm. need to see a dermatologist so that we can properly evaluate the condition and suggest proper treatment. Now let's talk about moles naman because uh, there's what we call congenital nevi which are mostly benign. But in rare cases, infants can also have a very large mole called a giant congenital melanocytic nevus. Now Dr. Cree, what are the causes for these uh, large moles? Are these random genetic mutations or are they linked to some other medical condition possibly? In most cases, nobody really knows. You're just born with it. However, these moles can, we cannot prevent moles. Moles are just supposed to develop when it develops. But what's important is to avoid it from becoming malignant. So there are means and ways to prevent that one. Now, Dr. Claude, a lot of people are asking, Ano ba yung purpose ng moles? How does this form? What is it? Why do some people have more moles than others? Actually, pag mas marami kang moles, mas nakakatakot, saka mas mahirap i-monitor. Tapos uh, siguro kung ang purpose lang ang hahanapin natin, it may be a beauty mark or a distinguishing detail on her skin or his skin. Dr. Cree, when it comes to the to the area where the mole is situated at, are there some areas 
on the body that need more attention than others. With moles, basically, we need to find out uh, certain things. Like A is for asymmetry, like if your irregular appearance of the two halves of the mole, then that should be a concern. B is for borders. So uh, we need to see if the borders are all regular and rounded. If it's irregular, then it can be a sign of concern also. Next is C, which is color. So the existing mole, usually it's like a brown, black. It's homogeneous in color. When it starts to speckle or it creates an array of colors, then that is something of concern as well. The other thing is D for diameter. Usually moles are about six millimeter or one fourth of an inch. If it goes more than that, then it's also a, an area of concern. And E is the evolution. So if you have new moles, like when you're over 30 and you get new moles, these are changing modes, then you also need to be of concern with that. Now, as for the location, if it's um, in the ear, the nose, and um, in the face, basically the concern is more of cosmetic. You don't want to disfigure or scar your face. So that is the best way why you should see a dermatologist. Another area of concern are areas where you cannot really monitor them, like the back, because you can't see them if it's changing color or if it's uh, you know growing, then that's another um, areas of concern in the anal area, areas that you don't really see. Now, skin marks usually aren't harmful or contagious, but in some cases, these skin pigments might mean something else. When we return, we'll discuss warts and other medical conditions linked to abnormal skin growth. This is MedTalk Health Talk. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and welcome back to MedTalk Health Talk where caring is our calling. Warts are skin growths caused by the human papillomavirus or HPV. Now, there are different warts and they can appear on different parts of the body including our faces, our genitals, and they can even appear in clusters. How can one get HPV? What is the normal way for one to get HPV and eventually warts? It's a uh viral infection so like any kind of infection whether fungal bacterial viral it is contagious and this is transmitted by skin contact so one from one person to another the human papillomavirus hpv virus is transmitted by skin contact now dr cree why is it so difficult for warts to go away why why do they keep on coming back they are hard to control because uh, they are basically they spread uh, it's not highly spreadable, but it does spread. So mainly from direct contact, uh, from surfaces, you can get it also. Another factor that affects it is our immune system. If your immune system is low, then you know, you'd know you have a hard time fighting the wart. So there are a lot of factors that would affect the recurrence of the wart. The other thing is if you manipulate on the wart, you keep touching it, and then you know, uh, you're not able to really take it out, and then you touch other parts of the body, then you can have more implantation of the warts, and it can cause even recurrence of the wart, and even even making it more in numbers. Pare-pareho ba ang warts, whether it be from at the genital area, whether it be on the hand, on the face, are these all the same? Iba-iba yan. Uh, ang HPV1 is plantar wart, so there is also your genital warts, usually by uh, HPV type 16 and 18. And there are a lot of types or strains of HPV that can cause different kinds of warts. But the most common that we have are the common warts that we have in the face, in the hands, in the arms, elbows. Now, Dr. Claude, a lot of viewers may be aware or they may be heard of a vaccine against a human papillomavirus or HPV. Is this vaccine effective in uh, preventing warts? This vaccine is actually given for children as young as nine years old up to age 26. So it takes care of nine types of HPV virus that affects uh, or produces genital warts and produces cancer. Now, warts can be unpleasant to look at and aren't necessarily dangerous, but they could also be a means of your body trying to tell you something. In rare cases, these rough textured bumps are often linked with complications that could cause permanent damage to your immune system. So, Dr. Cree, 
Um, you mentioned, you touched on how there is a link between uh, uh, warts and, and cancer. Could you talk more about this? Certain kinds of warts will predispose you to have progression of your cancer. Okay, like uh, for example, if you have human papilloma virus like in the genital area, okay, that can also cause like a uh, cervical cancer. It's molecular. There are links of uh, certain proteins that develops into cancer. And if the immune system is not able to fight it, there's an overgrowth of those oncogenic factors and it causes cancer. Are there also symptoms that uh, our viewers should, should be wary about when it comes to uh, a lesion similar to a wart that, that may need proper dermatological consult? Usually harmless naman yan, no? It, sometimes it just disappears in two years. No? Ang boil, mas acute siya. So yung wart viral, ang cause, yung boil, bacteria lang cause. Yung boil, it is an uh, infection of your hair follicle. Tapos, it's nodular. And it becomes more toxic when it gets infected. Like, you, there, there is redness, swelling, warmth on the area, and the patient also develops fever already. So, this you have to address right away. Yung ward pwede mo iwanan pa eh. Tapos, the reason why you need to also see these boils, kasi sometimes, hindi ito yung parang volcano erupting pigsa uh, mm -hmm. or boil lang. No? Sometimes it is quiet, walang pain, tapos it's growing very rapidly. No? Yung pala keratoacantoma na. So yung keratoacantoma, precancerous lesions yun. Are there some practices that people should be wary of that can be at risk of uh, contracting warts? Yung mahilig magkot-kot, so yung mga atopic patients, very prone sila sa warts. So yung children, kasi sila yung mahilig rin magkamot, hindi natin nasasaway, hindi natin nakikita parate, so mahilig sila mag-touch ng mga bagay or mag-touch din na sarili nila, hawakan yung ito, tapos hawakan yung muka. So yung children, mas common magka-warts, yung mga immunocompromised, yung mga may HIV, o kaya yung mga treated for cancer, or may diabetes, yan, yung mga weak ang immune system, mas prone din sila magka-warts. When we come back, our guests will give you advice on how to take good care and manage our moles, warts, and birthmarks and ways to prevent skin cancer. This is MedTalk Health Talk. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this is MedTalk Health Talk, your partner in healthcare. Now, kids growing up with big moles, especially those that are raised, may scratch this or cause some form of mechanical trauma on these moles. Dr. Cree, is it possible for a mole to transform from benign to cancerous with repeated scratching kapag palagi itong dumudugo nakakamot? Yes, it's possible. Sometimes it may not even be irritated and it can transform into malignant melanoma. But uh, signs that, uh, that are suggestive of that would be bleeding, uh, infection, like uh, growth. Although sometimes when we, you manipulate on the, on the wart and it uh, starts to have bleeding and all, and then you have it checked, you can actually produce a false positive kind of melanoma. I mean, people would think that it's melanoma, but uh, it's not really because the only reason is that you picked on it, so it gives you a different clinical picture. Dr. Cree, let's talk about how to prevent skin cancer. First of all, is the Filipino skin type prone to uh, skin cancer? Well, we are blessed with uh, skin type 3 and 4. So basically, we have protection against cancer. So we don't get as much cancer as Caucasians or, you know, that, that kind of skin type. Mm -hmm. So we are lucky that uh, we belong to that skin type, the darker skin type. But even if we are darker, we still can get melanoma. So, of course, to prevent it, we're lucky because since we're darker, we seek shade when there's too much sunlight, which is a good, good practice that we are actually doing already. We use umbrellas to shade ourselves, which is good. We use caps, uh, wide brim hats. Uh, usually, we already do that. So even without knowing, we are 
basically protecting ourselves from having melanoma or preventing such. Uh, we also like to apply uh, broad spectrum sunblocks. And uh, the only thing is, uh, if you are doing uh, outdoor activities, you have to reapply. Uh, it's uh, advisable to reapply every two hours if you can. Talking about uh, birthmarks again for those parents who are very concerned about significant sized birthmarks on their child uh, when born or at their early age. Dr. Claude, what can you advise for them? Should they wait a little bit? It might be hard for some parents not to do anything during, uh, at that moment. Pag malaki siya, when I say big talaga mga more than 20 centimeters, more than 40 centimeters, yung mga ganyan, minumonitor siya. Minumonitor mm -hmm. siya ng mabuti to check for any changes. Sometimes we even request MRI and check for neurocutaneous you know, uh, conditions or a syndrome. When it comes to our skin, uh, what type of preventive maintenance can you advise our viewers? Is there a time frame where they should just uh, have their skin checked even if they don't feel any symptoms? So you can uh, find a very good cleanser to wash your face and body once or twice a day. Moisturize, put a lot of emollients to make your skin barrier strong mm -hmm. and to protect using a sunscreen. And Dr. Claude, uh, for general skin health, is there a certain regimen that you could advise our viewers to follow? Because a lot of people uh, take their skin for granted. Take good care of your skin, no? limit sun exposure, protect your skin from the sun by using sunscreens, wide brim hat, eye, eyeglasses or sunglasses, and um, you cleanse with a mild cleanser, non-fragrance, and uh, moisturize with emollients, a lot of emollients to make your skin barrier strong. Kasi ang nangyayari pag hindi tayo nagmamoisturize, no, at hayaan lang natin yung pawis natin na moisturize sa balat natin, mm -hmm. our skin gets macerated. It gets macerated, and more it gets weakened, no, without proper moisturizing. So pag weakened yan, mas malalaki yung pores niya, mas malalaki yung holes niyan, so, hindi mo na contain yung sarili mong napoproduce na oil. Tapos, mas mabilis din nakakapasok yung mga environmental pollutants and allergens. Ayun. So, mas mabilis din silang nakakapasok. So, it's important talaga to take good care of your skin because your skin is the largest organ of your body and it mostly reflects your general health. Thank you, dermatologists Dr. Claudine Ray Lagman Javier and Dr. Maria Cristina Puyat for being with us today and sharing your tips and expertise about how to manage and treat skin growths on our bodies. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and thank you very much for watching MedTalk Health Talk. We'll see you again next time. <music>